Hello, my name is Saul Cantu, and this is Texas Math Mundo. In today's episode, I have a panel of coaches that I deeply respect, and we're going to be discussing the Texas Math and Science Coaches Association's 2021 tournament results. Uh, Tim uh, has a statewide meet, an invitational, where you can participate. And a lot of the active teams and better teams often participate. So it would be interesting to analyze the results. I have Eridani Alcantar, fellow coach at Wisdom High School. I have John Delgado, coach at the North Side, formerly Jeff Davis High School in Houston. And I have Marco Campos, coach at Sharpstown High School in Houston. We will be giving commentary and analysis on the 2021 TMSC, TMSCA State High School Meet. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, gentlemen, I just realized that I did not put our faces on the recording. Oh, I feel so horrible. So it'll be more like of a podcast. Anyways, audience, Texas Math Mundo audience, these are the gentlemen plus one more who had to leave. You'll be hearing their voices as we discuss the results of the TMCA state test that occurred yesterday. Say hi, Aradani. Hi, my name is Aradani Alcatar. Say hi, John. Hello. So you'll be hearing Aradani, <laughs> uh, you'll be hearing John, and you'll be hearing Marcos, who had to step out on the recording that follows. Sorry about that, guys. So long. Hello, Texas Math Mundo audience. Uh, today we have a real treat. I have a panel of coaches that I deeply respect. And we're going to do some commentary and analysis on the TMSCA state meet, which occurred yesterday. Uh, of course, I'm Saul Cantu, and uh, I also have with me my, uh, my uh, comrade in arms, uh, Eridani Alcantar. Say hi, Eridani. Hey, how you doing? Uh, he helps coach the Wisdom High School math team with me in Houston, Texas. Uh, below him, we have John Delgado, Northside Pride Panthers. Say hi, John. Hello, guys. All right. And below him, we have Marco Campos, a Sharpstown Apollo. All of them coaches in our district, and all of them I well respect. Say hello, Marcos. Good evening, guys. All right. Good. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the uh, sweepstakes results, and then we'll scroll down, and we'll take a look at um, the team scores for Number Sense Calculator and Math. Okay. So the first thing I want to do and we're going to start with 1A and 2A, is I want to applaud each one of these schools for actually fielding a team. In this pandemic environment, it's very rough to keep the troops in order. It's very rough. Uh, how's it been for you fellows at your, at your schools? How's it been uh, uh, trying to maintain a math team during the pandemic? John? Uh, well, you know, I had a lot of interest at the beginning of the year, but it really, it, it's hard to keep the, the team together and then because they get intimidated. So, uh, but, but I think I have a, a nice little solid team uh, once uh, for, for district. Have you all been meeting online in person? How you all been meeting? Uh, you know, uh, online, <laughs> obviously with you guys with wisdom. Yeah, uh, but we have one good uh, thing. Yeah. You know, I actually held a few meetings this, this week, this spring break, and they all came in. All right. It oh. seems like they, they might have gotten something out of it. So, all right. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really hard to you know keep uh, a team going when some of the kids uh, you know go to in person classes and some of them uh, are virtual. And uh, I, I think the difference between virtual and in person practice really does make a difference. Um, oh yeah. The environment, it the does. interaction between them, and the, most of all the, the the paper format. How about you, Marco? How are those Sharpstown Apollos hanging? Yeah, man, it's been very difficult. Uh, I think our team in the past has been a lot more of like a like just like a community effort. Like we've been very tight, and so not being able to see each other in person has made it very difficult to train these new kids. So, well, I tell um, you, in the past, y'all looked good. Those jumpsuits looked good yeah. at tournaments. Yeah, yeah, those were. Really <laughs> cool. Hey, so um, starting with one A and two A, this is a question I have. Uh, these are small rural communities. Do these guys have more time or less time? Because are they working out on the farm all day long or are they have nothing to do out there and they have more time? Do they have more time or less time to study? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. 
Most of most of my kids have been working. So, all right. <laughs> so a, these uh these one A and two A schools. Let me go ahead and uh, give them their acknowledgement because, like I said, at least they're fielding a team and giving the kids an opportunity. That needs to be applauded. The first all overall team was Lindsay, the Lindsay Knights, Conference Two A, Region Two. Second place was Garden City, the Garden City Bearcats, uh, Region uh, Conference One A, Region One. Then you had the Poolville Monarchs from uh, Conference Two A, Region Two. The Rankin Red Devils from Conference One A, Region Two. The Munster Munster. I'm not sure Munster. how to pronounce that. I think it's Munster. Munster. And then we have the Munster Hornets from Conference Two A, Region Two. The Avery Bulldogs, Conference 1A, Region 3. And Latexo. Now, Latexo, I recognize them. They've had some powerful, yeah, powerful mad teams in the past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're Conference 2A. Uh, they're the Tigers, Conference 2A, Region 3. Uh, Sudan Hornets from Conference 2A, Region 1. Shelbyville Dragons, Conference 2A, Region 3. Uh, Tioga. Bulldogs, Conference 2A, Region 2, and the Hamilton Bulldogs, Conference 2A, Region 2. All right, so um, Lindsay seems to have won uh, the team sweepstakes pretty handily with a, a distance of about 600 points here. Um, I know they're in Region 2, so that they might be near Dallas somewhere. I'm not so sure. These are very small cities. Um, mm-hmm. Let's take a look. Did they sweep? No, Latexo and Math. Uh, yeah, like Latexo's always had. Let me, like, I wonder well, if that I, made... I think I think in previous years they, they had a, a couple like really standout students um, that were scoring like the two hundred two fifties or or like high two hundreds. Uh, but maybe that, that those people graduated. But I remember them being pretty strong in uh, previous uh, TMSA tournaments. Yes, I remember going to a tournament in Klein High School hosted by Josie Mallory. And they attended. And oh, yeah, yeah. their scores at the time, I don't know, it might, might have been 10 years ago, I don't know, but their scores at the time were, were, were like comparable to the highest classifications. I think they might have lost uh, some uh, population because if I remember correctly, they might have had been 3-8 at the time, but I'm not so sure. Anyways, uh, Lindsay looks pretty powerful, but Latexo looks like the team to beat. Now, here's another question I have for you, gentlemen. Do the Team SCA State uh, scores uh, translate as good predictors for the UIL State? Um, you know, normally, I think the, the scores are counted differently, right? Like their top four scores are really, uh, you can't have more than three seniors, I believe. Uh, yeah, as part yeah, of your no score. more than three seniors. So, yeah. so yeah, it's the top four scores, not the top three. And you can't have all be seniors. You have to have at least one underclassman. That's the yeah, difference. Yeah, so that could make a difference. Like maybe maybe Latexo had a, uh, another. Well, you know what? The, the difference between their 12th grader and their yeah. 11th grader isn't that, be. That, that high. But And those count because it's only three 12th graders. You can see the grade right there next to the math. Yeah, and I, I think it really does make a difference. Um, you know, I, I think uh, in 2019, you know, Wisdom High School wasn't ranked in the top like four i think we were like fifth or sixth and tmsca um but uh you know ended up winning state so i, I think the difference of a, of a of a fourth uh senior really does does make a difference and you know that fourth score in general yeah it's not an exact correlation but it, there is a correlation no doubt uh, there's definitely some indicators at the very least absolutely absolutely so it's not the perfect correlation uh, but if they're in Team SA State, uh, they're doing well. They're a power to reckon with. So uh, looks and like Lindsay has some really solid scores for calculator. You see those? Like, and one... please, I want to point something else out. Not a single one of them is a senior. Oh yeah, they're all. Yeah, they're... I mean, said, oh, there'll be a powerhouse next year too. Then they're coming back. Conference two A, watch out. But who knows if there's some other powerhouse out there that just didn't attend the, the Team SA State meet? Oh, that's true. But right now they're looking pretty unbeatable, though. Um, well, Poolville yeah. has a pretty, pretty good uh, competitor. There's uh, Sprague and the Poolville <laughs> Monarchs, but they're Conference Two A, so they'll be a, they'll be a, and they only had three scores in number sense. So they got, they had four. I have a really strong kid there. Yeah, like 
You know, I, th I think that's is that the than highest than one individually. Let's see. Looks like it. Yeah, it was Dalton Spr uh, Sprague. He, he has the highest uh, calculator score. Wow, that's pretty. Uh, the calculator and he also has the highest uh, number sense score. Number yeah, sense, two, two, yes. Three. That number sense so is that, pretty impressive. So. There we go. So the top score, uh, keep in mind, Lindsay is Conference 2A and Garden City is Conference 1A. So they won't be going up against each other. Uh, the next Conference 1A school is fourth place, Rankin. And they're not too far from Garden City. So that looks like a, quite a battle that's shaping up between Garden City and Rankin. You know? Uh, and they're both, uh, oh, well, Garden City is Region 1, Rankin's Region 2. So, so there goes uh, 1A and 2A. Uh, you know, it's a goal of mine to visit these schools eventually because I really want to... I'm going to be an expert in Texas geography before it's all said and done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> with this channel, I want to be able to go take a picture with the Lindsay Knights mascot, the Garden City Bearcats. Funny. Okay, any other commentary on uh, on uh, the uh, Region 1, uh, Conference 1A and 2A, gentlemen? Or can we go on? Mm. Um, I'm good. All right, yeah. let's go to uh, 3A. So let me uh, blow it up a little bit. All right, so 3A. Again, let's give kudos to all the participating schools. In 3A, you had the Sabine Cardinals from Region 2. You had the Whitesboro Bearcats from Region 2. The Brock Eagles from Region 1. The Ponder Lions from Region 2. The Dangerfield Tigers from Region 2. The Lago Vista Vikings from Region 4. The Idaloo Wildcats from Region 1. The Kalisberg Wildcats from Region 2. The City View Mustangs from Region 1. And uh, although they have a team score of 0, entered were uh, Denver City Mustangs from Region 1. And Grand Saline Indians from Region 2. And so a big applause to them because at least they're signing them up. At least they're getting their kids involved, you know? Yeah. Now, these are all Region 2. I mean, these are all uh, Conference uh, 3A. So they'll be going up against each other. But one thing I noticed immediately is there's no Region 3 schools represented. And gentlemen, we're Region 3, but our Region 3A... Our 3A schools in Region 3 are simply not represented. Oh, wow. Why is, is that? It, is, is, wow. That's the entire list right there? Oh. Yeah, uh, there were uh, 11 schools uh, in Region and Conference 3A. So, And also, you know, the pandemic might be impacting uh, participation rates. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the numbers might be smaller because of that. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're smaller because of that. I'm just happy that these that these teams has gone out of their way to provide that opportunity. They all deserve to be applauded here, you yeah. know. Uh, let's see how uh, how dominating the victory was for Sabine. Uh, they're they're pretty dominant victory. The Region Two Sabine uh, Cardinals. If we look at the results down here, they swept number sense calculator math wow, and science so <laughs> and. Uh, Pretty handily, it looks like. Yeah, they seem to have a pretty pretty good calculator team. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the scores are pretty tight. So I think they're definitely poised to win uh, UHL State uh, uh, handily. Well, you know, we don't know what other schools out there, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, oops, we're not so sure what other schools are out there. But um, for sure, as represented by Team USA State, uh, they look like the team to beat, for sure. And also, you have to take into account that this thing was on the computer. So, uh, you know, that might have affected their uh, their scores. Maybe, so they, maybe they score higher on, on a piece of paper. You think uh, they was, score it was, higher? It wasn't a solid test? No, no it was like on the they, computer. They on the computer, and uh, they entered the the, uh, the answers on the computer. Ah, uh, okay. So. And Brock High School has a pretty solid team, but look at that fourth score. Yeah, it's kind oh, of yeah. low. Yeah. But that four score doesn't count in UIL. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. He's only a ninth grader. So yeah, give him some he's, slack. He's getting here. in there. Yeah. Give him some slack, man. It's only a ninth grader here. You know? Uh, That's, yeah. That might have been first if it was by regular UIL rules. Yeah, I think it, I think it is, man. Yeah, so there you go. That, that could uh, flip-flop at state then. 
You know? Because it's only mm -hmm. three that count. <clears throat> also, I want to point out that uh, I like it when I see a team that has several different uh, grade levels. You know, like Brock has a 12th, two 11th, and a 9th. So uh, that's a sign, I think, of a healthy team. When you have various mm -hmm. kids at different grade levels participating. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I agree. Uh, we got some dark horses, you know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. But like I say, I don't know how predictive this will be. Uh, we only had ten schools or eleven schools registered here, and uh, or at least they only show them on the rankings. Oh, that third place in math was pretty high too. Like the um, Sanders, eleventh grader, two two twelve. Oh yeah. From math. And from Hidalgo High School. From Hidalgo. Significantly higher than everyone else. Yeah, I think that might have been first. Yeah. From what high school? Yeah. It's the one that it's the high school that ranked third. Look at the top score. Uh. For oh, Sanders 212 here. You're talking about. Yeah. Is that the only above two 200 score? So for 12th grade, the high school is 132. For 11th grade was 212, which is Logan Sanders. Yeah, that guy from... Uh, and 10, I don't 10th, the highest score was 112, it might, it might be. And then for 9th, it was 100. So, yeah, that's the highest score on uh, All right. uh, so 3A Sanders math. Game. He's coming back. He ain't going nowhere. You know, I, I will say for the seniors, at least they get to compete. Who knows how good they were last year as juniors, and it was so tragic that they yeah, couldn't yeah. compete and showcase their talents last year. Yeah. That COVID hit uh, fast and furious, and everything got canceled. So at least uh, I feel really bad for last year's seniors. But yeah, um, tell me about it. <laughs> we had a it's a shame of, because they had they spent so much time practicing. You know, we had a good group of seniors last year. So I'm, I'm it was tragic, but you know what can you do? This is the world we have now. Yeah. Uh, at least these seniors this year get a chance to compete. So, all right, that's an interesting look at three A. Any other comments before we move on? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Now here's the deal. We go to four A. Another 10 schools represented in 4A. Oh, I recognize Argyle. I, I thought they were, well, I guess it's changed, but I remember them being in 3A. I think so. I think so. There was real alignment. So let me go ahead and uh, give these 4A schools the recognition they deserve for at least participating and uh, being part and giving the, their kids an, uh, uh, an opportunity to participate in the state meet and supporting math in general. Uh, so you have the uh, Argyle Eagles from Region 1. The Spring Hill Panthers from Region 2. The Lindale Eagles from Region 2. The Salado Eagles from Region 3. Eagles are a very popular mascot for this division. Uh, the Little Cypress Mauriceville Bears from Region 3. Uh, the Hershey Huskies from Region 1. La Feria Lions down in the South Texas Region 4. North Dallas Bulldogs. In Region 2. And quite honestly, uh, the last two, I think, are charter schools. Salinas STEM Early College High School in Region 4. And Carter Early College High School, both from La Jolla Region 4. You know, it's hard to find the mascots for these uh, for these uh, charter schools and early college high schools. They're kind of new. So I don't yeah. know their mascot. I got a number I'm going to call, though. I'm going to call the, I'm gonna call those schools directly and ask them what their mascot is. <laughs> it needs to be more uh, generally publicized. You know, for now, they're question marks, though. I don't know. But, yeah, Argyle. I've heard that name before many times. Yeah, I, I think there's been a perennial powerhouse in, in the, you know, 4A uh, division. Well, look at 4A. They uh, I think, swept did, it. Didn't they have, like, a really good coach uh, a couple oh, years ago? Oh, swept. They swept the uh, number sense Cactus Mountain Science. But let's see. Their team score was a 28-02. <laughs> it's pretty handily. They beat the Spring yeah. Hill Panthers pretty handily. Um, again, there's only one Region 3 school represented in this group. And a little, a little Cypress Cyprus. Mauriceville is Region 3. And they came to our tournament when I was at uh, Carnegie Vanguard and we hosted. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember they, uh, they came all the way to our tournament. I really appreciate them supporting our school. Uh, that's when I was at Carnegie Vanguard High School and hosted a tournament. So for them to come and, and, and participate... Uh, I had got a good impression from Little Cypress. I think they're in Orange, Texas, or out towards... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's Orange. Yeah. Orange, Texas. So, uh, hey, there was a real sweet lady sponsor. I remember being very, very sweet. 
I wonder if it's the same lady. Uh, but regardless, uh, kudos to them. And they're the only region. Uh, oh, yep, I'm lying. I think uh, Salado is region three also. I have Salado as being re- uh, Salado, Salado. The Salado Eagles being region three also. So at least that's that. Um, if they're both region three, Salado and Little Cypress, Mauriceville, they're going to have a tough competition come at regionals. Because they're close. Their scores are close. Salado's number sense looks pretty pretty awesome. Calculator scores. Yeah, our y'all handily just swept this uh, this division. So we'll see what oh, pops up. Huh? We'll take a look at their grade levels. Look, look at look at uh, number sense has different people. Uh, like they have a ninth grader, tenth graders, and eleventh graders for calculator. I think. Uh, I got one senior, I think. In science. In science. They have two seniors in science. Oh, they have two seniors uh, in science. Wow, they're Most coming back. So there's another question I have. And this is very important. And the picture is not complete until we address this. And I do want to address this in a future show. Who has programs feeding into them? Does Argyle have programs feeding into them? Or are, are they just uh, creating all their own talent from scratch? You know, is it like, you know, you know, you got in in Fort Bend, you got uh, Fort Settlement, First Colony, Quail Valley, all feeding into Clements and Dulles. Yeah. And that powerhouse, that just generational now. Uh, I think and, North Shore Middle School feeds into North Shore High School. Do they have a program in North Shore Middle School? Yeah, I think so. I think, I, Don I, Kirby, I think they're like right next to each other. And I think Don Kirby goes down there himself to try to coach yeah, them. Yeah, I think it, they're right next to each other, so... So the question does have to be asked, uh, does, a, does a school like Argyle have a middle school program feeding into them? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. Uh, they have this freshman right here in number sense scoring 100. Yeah. That tells me he must have had some training possibly. Or maybe yeah. they've just been training at Argyle. Have mm-hmm. they been training face-to-face? Has it been online? I don't know. Good. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see what tips they would have for, uh, for practicing during the pandemic. It's it's also hard to know because like uh, we we can't see any scores from last year, so we don't know if they've you know if they carried over from the previous year. Yeah, yeah, good. That's true. That's true. It's hard to know. It's hard to know. I want to look at the 2019 results, uh, but that's two years ago, and I was like, nah, I think it's kind of distant. And you know, mm-hmm. there's only four years in high school, so <laughs> a year, a year can make a difference, really. It can. I feel like. I've seen students go from poor to mediocre to outstanding in a year's time. So that's very yeah. true. So, yeah. I, you know, so one of our programs has got to be on the middle school program. Did, did a Team SCA have their state middle school uh, tournament? Does anybody know? I am not, sure. not sure. I'd have to look it up. I'd have to look it up. All right. So that's 4A for you. Argyle, man. Maybe I can get their coach on here and interview him. It'd be interesting to get some insight. All right. Hey, you know who else is 4A? Mickey Leland College Prep Academy. Our good student, uh, Caesar might be able to do some damage here as an individual. Oh, okay. So we'll see. We'll see. They're 4A? They're 4A. I don't know how they pulled it they, off, but they're they 4A. Didn't, they didn't. I thought they were 6A. They're 4A. They were 6A when I was there. You know? Did, did, they, did they start accepting neighborhood kids? <laughs> All right, guys. Any more comments for 4A? Because we'll go on to, region fi- to uh, Conference 5A. Let's go on to our, our conference. This is our conference. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> As luck would have it, Conference 5A had 22 schools participate. 22 schools. And, okay, so we have uh, Highland Park, Scots from Region oh, look 2. look at that score, man. They're out of control. But Sheridan Pioneer is right on their tails, though. Yeah. Sherilyn Pioneer, uh, Diamondbacks from Region 4, down in South Texas. The Science Engineering Magnet, Eagles, down in Region 2. The Wiley High School Bulldogs in Region 1. The Lubbock Westerners in Region 1. Hallsville Bobcats in Region 2. Pine Tree Pirates in Region 2. Longview Lobos in Region 2. Flower Buff Hornets in Region 4. And our first Region 3 school on the list, Goose Creek Memorial Patriots from Region 3. 
Sherrilyn High School, the Rattlers on Region 4. White House Wildcats from Region 2. Palm View Lobos from Region 4. Mount Pleasant Tigers from Region 2. And us, the Wisdom High School Generals from Region 3. Uh, Ryder Raiders from Region 1. Conotil Eagles from Region 1. Grapevine Mustangs from Region 1. Sulphur Springs Wildcats from Region 2. Parkland Matadors from Region 1. Azel Hornets from Region 1. And these two schools, I don't know if they have participants, but they were signed up. Adams Cougars from Region 2 and Adamson Leopards from Region 2. All right. So Highland Park. Dominating. I'll be honest with you. I sent an email to their coach, see if he would interview for this channel. He hasn't <laughs> responded yet. Oh, okay. So we'll see if he, if he responds. I would really... He's been there for so, a while. Yeah, Highland Park is, always makes an appearance at... Uh, TMSA State and, and UIL State. They're very, very strong presence. They're very powerful, man. Uh, Highland Park Scots. Let's see if they swept. No. In fact, oh, they wow. only won science. Ugh. So, Sherilyn Pioneers are looking real strong. In, uh, but those are 12th grade scores. What's that? Those are, those are 12th grade. Oh, no. Those are team rankings. Yeah, there's team rankings. There's a 10th, 11th, 12th, and 10th grader here. So Sherilyn Pioneer, man. Yeah. So I don't know if that's some sort of a charter school. It used to be the Sherilyn Rattlers, and I guess uh, Sherilyn, Sherilyn Pioneers are a new school down there, mm -hmm. or relatively new school. So, but they they seem very, very strong high. calculator scores. Let me see their calculator score. Two ninety two, two ninety two, two eighty. Like oh, oh pretty man. tight. Can you scroll down a bit more, Kenji? Yes. Science and engineering magnet. Oh, look at that. Man, this is a competitive reach. I mean, uh, conference like five uh, A. They're seeing some really strong scores, even at sixth place. Yeah, yeah. Highland Park is sixth place in number sense, and they were first place overall. So that means their other scores must have been really incredible, or maybe they just uh, maybe they just did well in uh, science here. Let's see how how their science is. There's a distance, you know, in Highland Park uh, science scores. Oh, I yeah. don't think that my audience can see that because we're covering it here. There's science scores right there. They look very, very, very strong. All right, cool. You know, I, I, I want to point out that uh, that uh, Mount Pleasant really, really fell from uh, two, three years ago. They were like the state champion in like 26, 7, 16? In calculator? Six, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we... Uh, we lost to them. Really? But yeah. You know, who knows how much of it has been the uh, pandemic? Who knows? Uh, and, and different communities have been disproportionately um, affected by the pandemic, you know, coming from. Yeah. So it's well, very uh, hard to tell. I'm not sure um, I remember, but I think the coach was going to move to Highland Park. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, we, I, met, I remember I met the coach a couple years ago. I thought the coach was going to Hawesville, maybe. I think it was Highland Park. Oh, really? Highland Park? Yeah. Wow. So the rich get richer. <laughs> What's kind of Tio here? Like, I remember them being having a really strong team. They yeah, they went state in 2018. Um, again, they've, they, you know, people graduate. I do think yeah. they still have the same coach, though. Yeah, yeah, they do. Kind of Tio is 12th. Yeah, so they're 12th place. And they, they only had, had three uh, people here. Um, oh, okay. They get a fourth. Yeah, 38, 170, 161. And who knows if they had everybody available? Sometimes people will travel for spring break. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I wouldn't count them out. <laughs> you know? You know, I wouldn't count them out. Uh, hey, those year, are solid scores. Yeah, hey. last, last year they had the, well, 2019 they had the, the, the state champion for a calculator. Yes, Corona? So, yeah. I'm going to yeah, try to get him yeah, for an yeah, interview. Yeah, real, real sweet. He's a real sweet kid, man. Oh, good. And I want to I see if I can get him for an interview. Goose Creek is in our region, gentlemen. <laughs> they got two 12th oh, yeah. graders, though. But they got one freshman here. Yeah, he's strong. So This, uh, this young uh, Gupta person, I don't know if it's a male or female, but this Gupta person as a freshman. Who else is in our region for number sense, actually? For number sense? Well, this whole list... 
Region 3 is just represented by uh, us. Goose Creek. And by Goose Creek. And that might be it. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Region 3 is not very represented at this Team USA meet. And it really saddens me, to tell you the truth. Uh, Region 3 has fallen throughout the years as far as opportunities to take turn to take uh, practice exams, local tournaments, mm -hmm. active coaches. We got to do something to inspire the troops in Region 3. You know? <clears throat> but uh, it's very interesting development. Sherilyn Pioneer, man, they're looking incredibly strong. Although it's close. It's close in number sense. But Matt, uh, look at that calculator score. Dang. Yeah. And if you look at just yeah. their top three, if you look at just their top three, the, the, the Gulf widens. So Sherilyn looking really strong in calculator. Sherilyn yeah, I, I think the, they look like the favorite to, to win state. Sherilyn Pioneer, and, I should say. And one of them is a 10th grader. <laughs> Same thing for Sherilyn. Their top score is a 10th grader. Wow. Yeah, look at that number sense, 291. Wow. All right, guys. They're looking tough. The science engineering magnet, they're, they're perennial powerhouse, too. They do good every year, too. See if I can get that coach on here. All right, guys. Yeah, Azel. I'm trying to get the Azel coach on here. Uh, Zapata, is he still there? He's, is he still? Yeah. Heard, I don't know. He might have He's been doing it for a while, right? I think he's a founding member of Team SCA, so I want to get him on this show, too, if I can. Let's see if he'll answer my phone calls. Let's see. <laughs> All right, guys, that's Region 5. Um, that's Conference 5, excuse me. And now we got to go to 6A. 6A. Hold on. Let me get 6A. Paperwork. So let me uh, explode it a little bit. All right, 6A. So 5A. 4A, 6A. So, again, let's give uh, kudos. Let's give applause to these uh, teams are uh, listed. There's 11 teams listed, starting with the Martin Warriors of Region 1, the Klein Oak Panthers of Region 2, the Clements Rangers of Region 3, Lake Ridge Eagles of Region 2, North Shore Mustangs of Region 3, Edinburgh North Cougars of Region 4, the Village Falcons of Region 3, and, you know, I cannot find uh, this San Antonio basis. Uh, I think it's one of these charter schools. I'm telling you, these charter schools, they don't publicize their mascots. I don't know. I'm going to have to call them. I, I, they're, I, they're not even in the UIL list that I can see. You know, on the conference uh, alignments, I could not yeah, find... Yeah, a charter school. I could not find basis San Antonio Shivano High School on the uh, UIL academic alignments. So are they even part of UIL? Will they be competing in UIL? I, I think they might idea. be a charter school or private school. So will they be participating in UIL if I can't find them? No, I, I think a team is say uh, charter schools and private schools can join in. Yeah, so but they won't be competing for UIL apparently. No, probably not. I get then we got the Harlingen Cardinals from Region Four, La Jolla Coyotes from Region Four, and uh, I think Juarez. I think it's La Jolla Juarez Lincoln uh, Huskies from Region Four. So all they they all deserve. There's only 11 schools here, but they all deserve applause for participating and giving their kids a chance. You know what school is strikingly missing from this list? Uh, Dulles. Dulles High School. Why are they not yeah. on this list? Participate. <laughs> Does Klein not compete anymore? Because I see Klein Oak. But so Klein, oh, no, so Klein. Klein Oak has Brad Rice. Brad Rice is their uh, coach. He's a good yeah, coach, yeah. long-time coach. You know Brad Rice? Yeah, I know Brad Rice. Good guy, good guy. Yeah, Klein's, Klein's missing. Seven Lakes is not on there either. Paul Stroud was the coach at Seven Lakes last time I knew. Paul Stroud, uh, Josie Mallory retired, I believe. That might be that might signal the decline of Klein High School. She was the only one doing it. There was no one else helping her. I don't know it. You know, maybe they pop up at UIL. Maybe they'll pop up, but with uh, Josie Mallory gone. By the way, I'm trying to get Josie. She's my number one on my list. I'm trying to interview her. Decades, yeah. a gazillion state championships. I need to interview this lady, but I can't. I don't know how to contact her. I look on Facebook. Like, I look on LinkedIn. <laughs> Somebody who's listening, get to Josie Mallory and let her know that I need to uh, interview her. She knows me. She knows me, so I'm not a stranger. <laughs> she, you know, I'm not some weird Starco guy, but 
I don't know how to get in contact with her. So anybody know Josie Mallory, get in contact with her. Tell her I need to interview her, and we need her wisdom. Yeah, it should be really interesting to hear about. She always has all these stories. I, I remember talking to her at the state meet. She's really, really uh, sweet woman. She's a wealth of knowledge. A wealth of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> been so, teaching longer than uh, I think uh, most of us have been alive. So the Martin Warrior is quite impressive. Uh, it was close with them, them, them and Klein Oak. And then Clements, but you know, I don't know if Clements came full strength or not, man. Clements is always something to be scared of, you know? Yeah, the, these teams, not, I'm not trying to talk them down, but these team scores seem a little bit lower than the than the 5A ones. So I feel like either they didn't bring all their people or, you know, like you know, the pandemic probably really affected them this year. Well, I tell you what did not change is North Shore's dominance in calculator. Don Kirby, yeah. I don't know what they put in the drinks over there. <laughs> Wow, 300s, yeah. two yeah. 300s. 322, 313, 266 was their last play score. Yeah, M oh. M Michelle Chan is a veteran. She, she, she's been to the state meet since she was like a ninth grader. Well, they got three seniors so yeah. and an 11th grader, so they're, they're aging. I don't know if they're going to have people behind them or not. But uh, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> but I, wouldn't bet, I would not bet against them at state this year. Like, fact, I, th I think uh, his fourth was like Francis Sampson. Um, on 2019 state, um, so I think uh, Cardoso is replacing him. Well, not replacing, but filling in the spot. And then we have uh, another of the My Sisters. So, wow. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I'm sure he has people that are training. It's not even close, man. It's not even close. No. I need to get Don Kirby on this program. I've already asked him twice, but he's politely uh, keeping me at arm's length. <laughs> we'll see. I'll try again later. I think he's a little no. shy. I think he's a little shy. But I'll ask him again. I need to get Don Kirby on here. Look at Clements. Clements is still dominant in math, though. Although it was close. but uh, Yeah, the, the scores aren't as high as 5A, I think. Yeah, so it makes you wonder. if. And look, they're just ninth and 10th graders here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they definitely didn't have their full power that day. So their full power doesn't seem like it's there. Anyway. Um, I'm, I'm surprised to not see any any 300s in math this time. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, it was a test hard. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to look at the test, to tell you the truth. Was the test hard? Was uh, the people just not... And training for it's very difficult right now, man. Training is difficult with the pandemic. Maybe, uh, you know, everything's falling apart. We had a winter storm in Houston. Um, <laughs> but still, you would think that there'd still be those... Uh, those, uh, you know, and I say this lovingly, those freaks out there, you know what I'm saying? I wish I was a freak that could score over 300, man. These guys are incredible. All right, yeah. so. So I yeah, don't I'm know. I'm pretty sure I've heard uh, um, Larry White say uh, he he writes the test and then he, I guess he does the solutions as he, as he goes. Uh and he's admitted, like, he wouldn't be able to, to do those problems in the, what was it, 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah. These are oh, man. ridiculously strong. You know, another guy I want to get on this program is the coach on Edinburgh North. His name's Garza. Uh-huh. I, I, you know, I, I emailed him, but he's probably on spring break. Let's see what happens when he reads his email on Monday. Because he's a, he's a long-term coach, too. I'd like to get him on this program. Yeah, I think they have something insightful to offer. Is uh, is it wasn't Vela like uh six eight? Oh yes, but they're not here. There's no uh, yeah. ever Vela here. Vela was also very strong. Very strong, but they're, they're not here. So you know, there's no Dulles High School on this list. <clears throat> Clements, as far as I can see, only had ninth and tenth graders. Um. So, uh, and you know what? And those ninth and tenth graders might have been motivated by their parents. Sometimes the parents are the ones who uh, enroll them and are uh, determined to get them involved. So mm -hmm. I applaud parents who do that, by the way. You know? Um, so it is what Was it is. It uh, I think 6A is a little bit unstable. The only thing I think I could put money on is North Shore and Calculator. You know? I'd put money yeah. on North Shore and Calculator, but that's about it. The other ones, I'm still not sure. Yeah, Dunker is just very consistent. Tends pretty much every meet 
that he can. Sure. You know, kids, his kid, the same kids show up, and you know, you see, you see a North Shore on the list. You, you're gonna see who's fighting for second place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's six A, an interesting meet, and I'm glad that these. T- but we have district coming up next week, and we're gonna have a district results show too. But district results show should that be interesting. That would be much more interesting. Yeah. That should be interesting, uh, very informative, and you know, it's win or go home now. Hey, I want to briefly look at these Top Gun results, and the reason is because these, uh, just the seniors, because uh, the seniors, they're, um, you know, it's their final hurrah. You know where I'm coming from? Uh, yeah. This is their final bow. And, you know, when I used to have teams with seniors, you know, I used to have the seniors stand up or whatever and uh, recognize them. And so uh, in 1A and 2A, here goes our seniors, Dalton Sprague, Aaron Harper, Gage Benzer, Katie Dalton, Wyatt Thomas, Preston Smith. Take a bow, gentlemen. Good luck at, good luck at district, you know. And then we have in uh, 3A, Jonah Davenport, Tim Hoffman, Bethany Roper, Jaron Mernan, Dallas Howard, Adeline Womack. Seniors. Seniors. Let's take a look at 4A. David McFatridge, Ferris Turney, Anthony Shuey, Sean Kim, Andre Samarawira. I'm sure I'll, I brutalize these names sometimes. Braden Heiser. Let's take a look at 5A. Pranay Varada, Parth Nandekar, Maximiliano Ramirez, Jason Zhang, Yash Mittal, Brian Lee. And finally, in 6A, as a final bow to seniors, we got Logan Simon, Rish, Rishab Gosh, <coughs> Koi Nguyen, Hubert Jagi, Easton Guananda, and Vin Nguyen. All right. Kudos to them. Applause. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Any final words? Um, any final words? Well, it's a, it's a very different year. Um, you know, this, this whole situation has really changed things. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I think it puts into question some of, like, the uh, strength of, uh, like, what predictions you can make from, from, uh, from this tournament. Uh, so, you know, 6A, you're, you're missing out of powerhouses like Dulles and uh, Vela. So I, I, I think it's, you know, you don't, you don't know what, to, you, you shouldn't know what to expect. Yeah, it is hard to know. Uh, you know, and the it's not paper based, so that affects scores. So these scores could be lower or higher depending on how adept the student is at putting in the numbers. There are a lot of variables: the paper basedness of it, the pandemic, who's been who's been practicing face to face, who's been practicing virtually. One beautiful thing about the pandemic is that now. Um, our teams are connected because we're in the same district, so we get to practice and our teams, our, our uh, students get to collaborate. That's been a beautiful outcome. Yeah. Don't you think, John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like, uh, like it, it also takes some of the weight off of us, you know? Like, like you know how we, sometimes we take turns uh, coaching and I like having, um, I like having different solutions where we each each one of us knows a solution. Like we, we can go over it and discuss which one is better. Different viewpoints, different. Va- yes, I agree with that statement. Different uh, perspectives. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So next week, gentlemen, district. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited. I know the kids are excited, but uh, like I say, it's not the same unless you're practicing face to face. It's just not the same and. Uh, but thank God we're getting back at it. You know, thank God yeah. it's coming back around. It's, things seem to be coming back. Hopefully by next year, we'll be pumping in all cylinders. Yeah, man. 
Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. You ready for district, Marco? We're going to try to be, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right, guys. Final words. Eric Downey, final words for you. Uh, you know, just good luck to all the competitors. And, uh, you know, let's make this a memorable year for UIL. So I guess I'll, we'll see who uh, goes to state. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. How about you, John? Final words. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing to, uh, as uh, Alcantar. Uh, yeah, good luck to everybody. Uh, oh, you know. Uh, you know what? Never mind, never mind. No, uh, say it. Say it. You already said it out. It's already out No, there. because I, I, was, I, was, I had looked at the, the math test earlier, and uh, it's weird. Uh, I, I just wanted to mention a question, but, but like it, don't worry about it. Oh, it'll fine. be a topic you, you guys for can us. figure it out anyways. It'll be a topic huh? for us. Yeah, good, yeah. Good, good, good. How about you, Marco? Final words. No, man, I'm excited. It's a very different year. Yeah, it's, it's nothing like anything else we've ever experienced, so it'll definitely be very unique. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Absolutely. Well, you know, I just want to wish good luck to everybody. I do want to um, reiterate my applause for every single school that participated in the Team SA meet. They went above and beyond in a pandemic year, you know, to provide this opportunity for their kids. Uh, you know, I just I can't say enough. I don't care if you were in last place. I don't care how bad your team is. The fact that you signed up to take Team SA State and you gave your kids this opportunity says volumes to me. So I just wanted to say I appreciate all those uh, those teams that did that. Uh, good luck to everyone. And, you know, nobody really loses as long as we're all growing mathematically, you know. And, gentlemen, we're all in the same district. There will be no love lost next Saturday. No love loss. <laughs> Get ready to feel the uh, the wrath of the Wisdom Generals next week, gentlemen. All right. Getting that uh, red ink ready to, to uh, you know, <laughs> take points off your scores. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. All right, guys. I'm going to sign off here. Uh, farewell, guys. Farewell. We'll talk later, later okay? Man. All right. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed that discussion It's interesting insight analysis on the condition of mathematics in the state of Texas. Um, I do want to extend an invitation to coaches outside of my region, like in El Paso, in Dallas, in the Valley. I'd like to include you in my channel and include your perspective, your very important perspective on statewide mathematics. So if you're out there in the Valley, if you're a coach in El Paso, in Dallas, Lubbock, Wherever you are, please reach out to me and uh, let's get you on here so we can have some different perspectives on this show. Again, I hope you enjoyed uh, the show. Uh, Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Saul Cantu. So long for now from Texas, Math Mundo.